stars Nigel Bennett and Geraint Wynn Davies. And producer Jim Perriott will join us to discuss another unlikely cult hit about vampires. It's finally time for the Forever Night War Room. And it's all as SF Vortex returns. folks you've made it back to sf vortex now as promised i'm heading down to the war room to meet the guys from forever night i haven't been this excited since denny's brought back the grand slam you know the show ran on cbs in the early 90s and then in syndication and on usa and now it's back here on the sci-fi channel with a vengeance take a look The series, which began airing in 1992, tells the story of Nick Knight, an 800-year-old vampire who is now a police detective and, of course, works the graveyard shift. <laughs> the big twist is that this vampire, played by Geraint Wynne Davies, wants to give up his evil past and actually is the hero of the series. This is the, the guy wanting to be good, uh, to atone for his sins in the past. The, the, it's, it's an addiction. We're playing a, a man who's addicted to blood and who's trying to stay off it. Some of the behind-the-scenes tricks used by the producers of Forever Night include $2,000 repair handcrafted vampire contact lenses made in Italy, current juice imported from England to double as drinkable blood, and lots of pairs of vampire teeth, which, of course, can cause problems on the set. Well, you, you bite yourself if you're not very careful with the teeth. They're very sharp. Um, if you are biting someone else's neck, you have to be really careful because you can't feel it when they're in there. You can't feel when you're touching skin. Action. Nigel Bennett plays the evil vampire trying to drag Nick Knight back into the dark side. The temptation of knowing that you're never going to die if you just keep out of the way of stakes and sunlight, you know, that you're never going to die. That, that must be a very great temptation, that you're not going to age, you know. Uh, those, those elements are very attractive. Sorry. We've made it down to the war room, folks, to discuss a topic we've addressed before, vampires. But this time, we're not talking Dracula. Forget about it. That's yesterday's news. Today, we're talking Forever Night. And joining us today to talk about the more modern bloodsuckers are Jim Perriott, the executive producer and creator of Forever Night. Incidentally, Jim is also the producer of another one of my favorites, Dark Skies, and is working on an Anne Rice TV series that she is now shooting in New Orleans. Nolans. Also, Nolans, that's Nolans. right. And Geron Wynn Davis is here, the star of Forever Night, who played one of my favorite vampires, the one, the only Nick Knight. And also, his new series, Black Harbor, was just picked up for another season in Canada. Work, yes. When can we see it here? Um, hopefully soon. They're going to sell it, I think, in the next year to anybody who's willing to buy it. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Hope the Sci-Fi Channel is... Yeah, exactly. Okay. And to my left, as if he needs an introduction, folks, he's Nigel Bennett. He, of course, played LaCroix on the show and co-authored Keeping of the King with P.N. Elrod, and if I'm not mistaken, you did the voice on the audio version, correct? Yeah, that's right, yes, which okay. should be out soon. All right, there you have it, guys. First of all, thanks so much for being here. Okay. My first question, okay? <clears throat> Passion, horror, pointy teeth. It's easy for us, the audience, to see why this show was such a big hit, but why today, a year since you shot your last show, is this show such still such a big cult well, passion, big cold call passion, passion, horror, pointy teeth. Nice, why? Why? <laughs> why? Um, it was a good show. I think it's, it still is a good show. Damn it right, it had, was a good it show. had romance. It had um, sex to an extent. Right. Uh, it was, and that's very attractive. Well, actually, every episode they'd bring a new. Jim would write it for a, a new beautiful woman to come on for me to bite, and then uh, we decided that Nigel had to bite them as well, which was which was great for them. But what it did was actually the, the key element of it. Eternity. It's so cool to be with someone who's going to live forever. Mr. Perry, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I, you know, I think that there was uh, if the themes are strong and important. They have to do with uh, with eternal. But there were the big themes. There were themes about love and loyalty and uh, um, 
It's actually what sci-fi deals with best. Sci-fi can do it better than almost any other kind of genre because you can take that kind of god, you can take universal ideas, and you can actually put it into a storyline. Yeah, religion is a huge part of it, I think. And, yeah, and I also, think something, something about the classical nature of the program, you could have period stuff where, you know, people are dressed up in little frocks and they can say things about humanity. I mean, it's great. Yeah. You know, we've been promising this war room for a long time, so a lot of our fans have written uh, quite a few letters, okay, mm -hmm. regarding your show. So why don't we check out one of those letters now, okay? okay. Here Today's we go. Brought to you by the <clears throat> this first question, would you have been a fan of the show if you hadn't been involved with it? Very good question. What do you think? Yes, I think I would have been. Um, maybe but with me playing it, not necessarily, but actually, <laughs> I think the series, yes. Um, yeah, I think it was pretty cool. I think it was trying to do something that other programs weren't doing at the time. And I think that the kind of darkness with the sense of humor that Jim brought to it, and then Nigel and I as players, as well as Kathy and J John and everybody else who played on it, that was, that was cool. And there was a c kind of playfulness that we all had that you can't act. You have to, you have to live it. And, yeah. and yeah. that's... All right. Engaging all right. cast. Yeah. yeah. It was, oh, my God. It was we got to go to our first place. break. Yeah. I got to oh. go to my first break. Okay. We're not finished here yet, though, folks. When we come back, much, much, much more Forever Night Talk. So stick around. See you in a minute. Welcome back to SF Vortex, where we are still in the war room with the creator, producer, and the two stars from Forever Night, Jim Perriott, Grant Wynn Davies, right here, and on my left, of course, Nigel Bennett. Guys, even in the old days, vampires, sexuality. Okay, mm -hmm. on your show, a lot of vampires, a lot of sexuality. Uh, why the connection, Jim? I thought it was going to be Nigel's question. <laughs> <laughs> you really didn't that. You both the you creator know, and producer. No, penetration. I mean... Fang penetration is a uh, and uh, it's unrequited love. I mean, vampires can't actually do it without killing a woman, also, so that there's a whole tension there. But also for the woman or or the the, the person who's being brought over, it's yeah. the ultimate act of submission. Right. I mean, you are giving your life. Not you're not just giving your body or whatever. You're giving your whole being to this 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 entity, this vampire. Le petit this, mort. What, pardon? Yes. The petite petit mort. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yes. It's a, the little death. A little you know, mort. Sex is called the little death. This is a biggie. <clears throat> A huge, 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 huge death. Yeah. <laughs> the molar, the king of. Yeah. Nigel, agree? Oh, absolutely. And sucking. Roman is this romantic? <laughs> what kind of romantic uh, vampires? You consider vampires to be yes, romantic? I do, yeah. Every shot has you candles. Do? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every shot has <laughs> candles. Wait a minute, though. Wait, what's so romantic about you? Know, can I demonstrate? Oh, do you mind? God. Okay, oh, so, no. you know. So What's this, so romantic? So is that yes to dinner? Yeah, that is yes to dinner. It's all the stuff that leads up to it that's romantic. Ah, okay. You, you, what do you think, Jim? Is that true? Yeah. I mean, I think that, that the whole idea of, of unrequited love, I'm going to repeat myself, but I mean, I really think that that's the, that's the whole deal. It's romantic. You can have, but it doesn't end in sex. It mm. can't end in sex right. with, a, with a vampire. So there's a whole tension there. And, 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 I, that's the and also the man or the vampire brings centuries of history and of love making. I mean, there's skill there. There's a, there's a huge skill, which is, which is sexy, which is romantic. And, and it's, other than in the feeding frenzy, which, which people put the vampire lore in, in the, in the kind of the love, it is incredibly sen sensual as well as sexual. Yeah, right. there is, there's a hypnosis. We, we established the fact that vampires could actually hypnotize. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, That's uh, a sound okay. head. You know what it's time for? Guess what it's time for? No, it's, it's a question time. It's a question, yeah. yeah. That's, That's right, right. you guessed it. But this is the war room. Can we say no? Oh, no, sorry. I, no. <laughs> okay, time for another viewer letter. This one is from Bobby Williams, and she writes, in my opinion, for every night, is a metaphor for life. It reflects the journey we all take as we strive to become something more than what we are. Some good points there, don't you agree? A lot okay. of them. Now, in that context, how would you guys char characterize the relationship, the evolving relationship between Nick and, and uh, Lacroix? And Lacroix. Lacroix. Well, Lacroix is his, is his father, his vampire father. Um, and his mentor. Taught him, and every, his taught mentor. him everything he knows. And, and his, his brother. And his lack of soulmate. And his lack of soulmate. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that uh, he, Lacroix, was certainly very angry at that. It was a strange relationship, Yeah, right? he, was, he was ticked off with him because he was, he was rejecting all his father's values. It's a classic can't live with, can't live without kind of relationship. Yeah. And, and also the, uh, what the letter was saying, the metaphor for life, it's, it's 
it's truly the, the metaphor of, of being outside of life, I think, as much as anything. Nick, Nick's struggle it's, was it's to just, be mortal. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually the, the metaphor of being just outside of what we all say, we complain about it or whatever. I think one of the, the most attractive elements of the show, yet again, I'll just say it, is the fact that it's about loneliness. It's about not being a member of that club. It's about things that we always want to be a part of something that we're not allowed and all this. And there's something about that, that, that the mortals want to be vampires because they can't or whatever. And the vampires, well, this, this guy, which was the, the, the core of the, the morality of the show, wants to be something that he can't, and then never can, and re requires death, which is the true mortal act, to actually become it. Nigel, what that was longer than it. Wow, you did that was it. Long. Wow. That's it. That, that was terrific. That's the ad. That was it. Yeah. yeah. He made sense, didn't he? Yeah. Did it? It was amazing. So I'll have you get all the questions. The transcript <clears throat> after. Real okay. quick, it's been a year since your last show, since you taped your last show. What do you miss most about it, Nigel? Ah, uh, the crew were great. The the, the actors that I worked with, uh, it was fabulous. The whole experience. Jim? Best crew, best crew, best actors, best group of people I've ever worked with. You, we, we worked nights. Right. And uh, so there's a certain amount of uh, of pressure and, and, and loneliness bonding. and bonding. A lot of bonding on us. You know, it was we terrific. Bonding. But also, Jim, when he created it, he gave it to us. I, I, I don't mean that in a bad thing. He gave it to us. He said, okay, this is, this is our show. It was never a matter of a, of, of a, of a kind of a, uh, a godlike entity who said, this is mine, you do it. it. He invited us in to this journey of Forever Night, and we, we took it. It was yeah. a real hands-off situation almost. Or, it was, yeah. it was Where everyone had, had their hands off. It was the orb. <laughs> I, got about, <laughs> I got about 30 seconds left real quick. The future of Forever Night, maybe a movie of the week, maybe a feature film. What do you to. think, guys? Love we would love to. to. If we can get that thing kickstarted, that would be great. Yeah. The, 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 the series has anywhere to go. Sure, we didn't, we didn't end it. No. We, right. we, we left the final frame with Lacroix with exactly. his, with his steak stick. raised, but we did, never saw it come down. So, um, so you it's an open abs book. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything can happen. Yeah. Oh, no, it kills me to say it, guys, but we're out of time. Well, maybe not literally kills me, but <laughs> anyway, I want to thank Nigel, Garant, and Jim. Guys, thanks pleasure. for coming by. Good luck on all those pleasure. future thank projects. You. Thank thank you. You. Thanks, thanks for coming back. Thank you very much. We'll all be watching Forever Night right here on the Sci-Fi yes. Channel. Don't miss it, folks.